Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Skalkberger from Dr. Luke on Call, and today I had the amazing privilege to speak to a colleague of mine, Dr. Leon Fenter, who returned from Europe a while ago, and then he tested positive for the coronavirus. He described his symptoms and also how his wife tested positive a few days later. It's a really incredible story to hear, and also how they progressed, how they felt, what they did, and where they are at the moment. So enjoy listening. I hope it will encourage you for possibly what's to come, but also to understand that you don't have to fear. Good afternoon, everybody, and I really want to welcome a very special guest today, Dr. Leon, um, and he's going to give us personal information of what it is like to be diagnosed positive with COVID-19 and um, what it is to have a victory over the disease. Welcome, Dr. Leon. Thank you, Scott. Happy to be here. Okay, so you returned from a trip and um, then you obviously had to isolate when you were back, but tell me a little bit about the trip. Well, we went recently on a holiday that included uh, Spain and Northern Italy mm. and uh, also Austria. Um, yeah, what was interesting about it, and I did uh, give you this clip, it's about the, the fact that the Spanish people at that stage, that was on the 1st of March, did not take some personal space or isolation and protection, they didn't take it uh, really to task. So I'll just show you what, what happened at the Fallas festival that they had when we were there. Okay, that's very interesting. Let's have a, let's have a look at, at what you said. <laughs> Wow, thank you. That's really insightful. And now that's definitely not um, a lockdown that they had. So then when you returned, um, you know, from, from, you know, your trip and coming here, you obviously had to go into quarantine. Yes, the, the government instruction at that stage was uh, if you did return from overseas at that stage, you must self-isolate for two weeks. And uh, I'm very thankful to my partners that cooperated very well and were very supportive. Yes. And they said I should not carry on working. And I was, uh, we did self isolate during that stage. We came back on the 15th of March. Okay. So, and then when did you do your first test and did you have any symptoms before that? No, we were planning because I wanted to make sure that I'm fine. We did test on the 20th. Uh, we came back on the Sunday and we tested on the Friday. And at that stage, I didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. And um, then when did your symptoms uh, develop and uh, what were they like? Well, that night of, mm. the f of the 20th, I developed a fever of about 38 degrees and uh, myalgia, that body aches and pains, and this cold feeling in your sinuses that indicated that there's a cold inside you. Yes. And that persisted until the next two days, but it was better on the Sunday already. Mm. And uh, that is when the result came through. Okay, so what did the results say for you and your wife? Well, at this stage of when I got the results, uh, my test was positive. Mm. My wife was negative. I was okay. feeling better already at that stage. And I was doing sorting out things in my garage when the, the pathologist phoned me and said, you're one of the lucky ones that's got the positive test. I must say, it was quite a shock. It I can imagine just hearing those words, you are positive, must have been a bit difficult. Yeah, I, I think at that stage in South Africa, there were only about 60 cases mm. and I was one of the first. Okay. Yeah. So then the progression of the next five to seven days, because they say normally if it's, if it's fairly mild, five to seven days and your symptoms, you know, would, would you know, develop and then eventually start going away. What did it feel like that week and when did you test again? Yes, uh, the fever was gone by the Sunday and then but the overwhelming feeling was that of tiredness mm. and lethargy. You couldn't do much. I was still trying to mow the lawn and do things, but you couldn't do it much. You know, you're, you're mm. tired out very easily. You still had this cold feeling in your sinuses that there's a flu going on. Yes. But the overwhelming feeling is that just a massive feeling of tiredness. 14 days after the first test, uh, we went for another test. Um, the Western Cape government did phone me every day, mm. uh, wow. the health department, to, to monitor my progress. And I'm very thankful for that. 
and uh, they regarded it as a very mild affliction. Mm. Um, but, uh, and they also said that you should not test actually after two weeks, but I think that is because I'm a, uh, I'm a medical worker, I should mm. test and I did go on the third, uh, that's two weeks after the first test and it was positive again. And my wife was also positive at that stage. And yours, you improved, your symptoms improved and she, she was fine. She didn't have much symptoms. Uh, even now, um, I think a couple of days later, she doesn't have any symptoms whatsoever. I'm also feeling great. I don't have any tiredness whatsoever. Mm. I've got a little bit of a cough, but my wife tells me that's my usually morning cough. So mm. I'm not short of breath. I'm, I'm feeling great. There's no problem. Yeah, so that shows you, you know, that a lot of people can be carriers of the disease and be positive, not even know that they're positive if you look at her. Yeah. That we're very, very thankful. I must say, you know, at night in the first couple of days after you've tested positive, you don't sleep so well. You're mm. worried about this, mm. and you, you. But it's more psychological, not so much physical. Well, Dr. Leon, um, you know, obviously people look at this and ask a question because they look at your lovely grey hair and they would say, "But this gentleman is not 30 years old," and everyone says the older people struggle with disease. And um, you did so well. And, you know, would you say it's attributed to the fact that you're a non-smoker, you live a healthy lifestyle, you exercise, you eat well? Yes, I think to a certain extent, we don't take vitamins. In point of fact, we don't take any medication whatsoever. We're mm. fortunate in that instance. And we take our fruit every morning and we exercise. And, uh, yeah, we, we're very fortunate. I must say we're very thankful that we're one of the 80% that is not afflicted badly. And we were very fortunate, yeah. Uh, fantastic. And as for some final remarks, your um, words of encouragement and a message that you want to give to, to the people watching. Yes, I would say that one mustn't despair, especially with the new developments in Britain with Boris uh, Johnson being badly afflicted. Mm. Um, I must say that one must just remember that most people do have it in a light way, and we were very fortunate to be amongst that group, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, thank you very much for your time and for having the discussion. I think it will really encourage people to not have fear and stay hopeful and look after their own bodies and stay strong. Uh, thank you very much for the discussion. Thank you, Scott. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye.